Hello, and today we are going to discuss about the load lying perpendicular to the plane of voltage joint. That means when load are in out of plane, then uh, how uh, reactions on the bolt will be coming into picture that we will try to understand. And uh, in each bolt we know that uh, due to this eccentricity of the load, the moment will come in the bolt group and as well as direct force will come. Now, as it is out of plane loading that is why here if we see uh, the two type of uh, stresses will develop. One is the uh, shear stress due to direct load and another is the uh, tensile stress due to moment. So, if we draw the diagram say for example, uh, a bolt group is connected with certain bracket say for example, this is connected here and we have bolt group at different positions. Now, a load of magnitude p is acting at a distance of e. So, moment will be basically p into e this moment will come into picture. So, and because of this p the shear stress will develop in this direction and because of this moment another force tensile force will come in this direction and we know this tensile force will uh, be in this top portion and in bottom portion there will be a compressive force. If we draw the stress diagram this will develop in this way may be this way. Now, where will be the center of line the center of rotation that means the neutral axis. So, uh, there are different opinion uh, for finding out the uh, neutral axis because it will not be at the C g of the bolt group. Uh, this is because this portions this bolt means uh, bolt lying on the above the um, uh, neutral axis will be in tension, but in this portion this portion the bracket if we see draw this the bracket is going to take the compression. So, the uh, uh, amount of compressive force will be huge in this direction compared to the bolt force in uh, as a tension. Therefore, the center of uh, rotation cannot be uh, at the center of gravity at the midpoint it will be somewhat below the midpoint somewhat here, but where it is how to find out. Another opinion has come that it may be at the bottom of the rivet bottom of the bolt, but this is also not true because the bottom flange of the um, bracket and the stanchion are not perfectly rigid. So, if it is not perfectly rigid we cannot consider that uh, all the comp means uh, all the bolts are going to be carry by and carry out by the tension this is not also practicable. So, what it is come across that uh, we actually we need to make some trial and error trial and error means we have to find out where it can lie. So, through trial and error analysis we can find out otherwise there is an opinion that we can consider at a distance of h by 7 where h is the height from the topmost bracket uh, sorry bottommost bracket to the uh, topmost flange uh, topmost bolt position that means this this will be h right. So, this will be h by 7 I am drawing once again if I see bolts are there say for example, these are the bolts sorry I am go going another page say this is the bracket and if we have if we have a bracket connected to the stanchion and bolts are like this then h will be the bottom most bracket to the top most bolt which are in tension. So, this is h and the 
stress development will be happening somewhat like this where this neutral axis will be lying at a distance of h by 7 these are the assumptions. So, if we consider the neutral axis at h by 7 then uh, we can find out the total tensile force on the uh, uh, on the bolt and total compressive force on the bracket. So, and we can make equal to find out the uh, equilibrium equation. So, uh, the assumption is here that the tensile force developed on the bracket will be proportional to the distance from N A. That means, T will be varying with distance at N A. Say, if this is the distance y, then T will be varying with y or I can write T i is equal to k into y i, where T i is the tensile force developed at ith, um, ith bolt and y i is the perpendicular distance from center of rotation or from neutral axis to that center of the particular bolt. So, this is what we can uh, assume and then we can find out the constant which is called elastic constant or proportionality constant that I can write as T i by y i. And because of this the moment we can find out moment of individual um, group means due to individual group moment develop will be T i into T i into y i. So, that will be k into y i square because T i is equal to again k into y i. So, k y i square. So, total moment of resistance provided by the bolt group due to tension if I write m dash then this will become summation of k y i square where i equal to 1 to n means n is the number of bolt uh, facing on tension. So, k into y i square that means we can write k into summation y i square. So, moment uh, of resistance provided by the bolt in tension we can write down in this way. So, therefore, we can find out the value of moment in terms of its tensile force that means, I can write moment is equal to uh, summation of k y i square that means, this I can write as T i into summation y i square by sum by y i right. So, tensile force means uh, the T i tensile force in bolt i I can find out as T i is equal to m dash y i by summation y i square right. So, uh, we can find out the tensile force at ith bolt will be m dash into y i by y i square summation of y i square. Now, tensile force at the extreme bolt that I can find out in this way also m dash into y n by summation y i square extreme bolt means if we have bolt in this direction different direction then uh, at different position and if this is the neutral axis then this is the maximum tensile force developed in the bolt. So, if at nth position uh, nth number of bolt then T n will be m dash y n by y i square right. So, for equilibrium equation uh, we can find out that this T means this total force in tension we can find out that T is equal to m dash into summation uh, y i by summation y i square. This is the total tensile force exerted by the bolt and this has to be equal to the total compressive force because we know about neutral axis the total tensile force and total compressive force has to be equal. So, total compressive force I can find out indirectly from this equation that is the C is equal to we can find out the same C is equal to T is equal to m dash y i 
pi summation y i square right and this c will be acting means if I draw the stress distribution uh, this is the neutral axis and this is the extreme bolt where tensile force T n is developing and here this is this portion is compressive force and carried by the bracket. So, this will this distance has been assumed at h by 7 where h is the total distance from bottom um, bracket to the center of the total uh, topmost bolt h by 7. So, the C g of this distance will be this much and that will be two third of h by 7, two third of h by 7. That means, it will be acting at a distance of 2 h by 21, 2 h by 21. So, the uh, C g will act at two third of h by 7 that means, 2 h by 21. Now, we can find out the external moment which is P into E, P into E is the external moment and this external mom moment we can equate with the moment resistance by the bolt in tension and compression. That means, uh, total moment I can find out that moment registered by the bolt in tension that is m dash plus moment resistance by the uh, compressive force moment registered by compressive force right. So, this will be the total moment that means, m will be equal to m dash plus c is the total compressive force into into y bar y bar is what? y bar is 2 third of h by 7 that means, I can find out m dash plus c we can we found already that is m dash into y i by summation y i square which is nothing but the total compressive force or the total tensile force and into 2 h by 21. This is the C g distance of the compressive force from neutral axis right. So, from this I can find out m is equal to m dash into 1 plus summation y i by summation y i square into 2 h by 21 right. Therefore, I can find out the m dash, m dash is basically moment resistant by the bolt in tension. So, moment registered by bolts in tension that is m dash that I can write m dash is equal to m by 1 plus 2 h by 21 into summation of y i by summation of y i square. So, this is what I can find out that means, what we found here that this m is basically p into e that uh, axial load means uh, sorry the vertical load which are coming into um, at a distance of e from the uh, interface of uh, um, uh, bracket and stanchion. So, this p e is the total external moment and m dash is the moment registered by the bolt in tension. So, the moment carrying by the bolt in tension can be found in terms of its uh, external moment that is m dash is equal to m by certain factor right. So, where m is the total moment means external moment and m by 1 plus 2 h by 21 into summation y by y i by summation y i square. So, that means, the fraction of moment taken by the bolt group will depend on the position of the bolts that y i and y i square number of bolts position of the bolt uh, and depending on that we can find out what is the fraction of moment is carrying by the bolts. So, this is how 
we can analyze. Now, we will find out the maximum tensile force at the bolt. What will be the maximum tensile force? Many maximum tensile force will develop at the uh, extreme bolt. That means, if we see this is h by 7 and total is h and if we see here that bolts are in this position 1, this position like this it is somewhere here. Now, the maximum tensile force will develop on the extreme bolt, because we, we told that bolt tension is assumed to be proportional to the distance from the neutral axis. So, it will vary with distance that means, the maximum will develop in this extreme bolt and that I can calculate T max as m dash into y max by summation y i square right. So, from this formula y max is this one, this y max will be this one and this value will be nothing but 6 by 7 into h, 6 by 7 into h because y max will be if this is h by 7 then this will be 6 by 7 into h right. So, maximum tension in the bolt I can find out from this formula and where m dash already we have found m dash will be equal to p into e by 1 plus 2 h by 21 into summation y i by summation y i square this will be the m dash. So, this is how we can means m dash right. So, once I find out m dash value then I can find out the maximum tensile force on the bolt right. Now, I will go to the design steps means I do not know I have been given a, um, a stanchion and which is connected to a bracket and then this bracket is carrying an axial means eccentric load of say p at a distance of e. Now, what should be the number of bolt means I do not know what should be the number of bolt I have to find out. So, if p and e is given then how to find out the number of bolts. So, how to start with. So, what we can do uh, we can write as a design steps. So, first what we can do that we can select a nominal diameter of bolt means we will select a diameter of bolt first the diameter of bolt we have to select because on that basis we can select the pitch distance and edge distance. So, pitch distance and edge distance as per the codal provision we can find out. So, d will uh, means according to the nominal diameter we can find out p 2.5 d and e is equal to 1.5 d 0 like this right. Then we can find out in next step we can find out the design shear strength calculate design shear strength. This design shear strength V d S B we used to calculate uh, as per the nominal diameter we can find out the design shear strength due to shearing and other um, actions. So, V d S P can be found. Next in third step we can select the number of bolt how do we select select number of bolt no select number of bolt line sorry bolt line that means in plan if we see then how many number of bolt line will be there say in this case this is one line this is another line means in this case in n dash will be 2 so number of bolt line in this we can select this depends number of bolt line we can decide uh, on the basis of this width what is the width available and we have to provide certain end distance and certain gap the spacing we have to provide and accordingly either we can provide two bolt line or three bolt line means as per the type of structure means type of member we are going to select 
depending on that we have to decide number of bolt generally we consider number of bolt as 2 in general and then once we know this we can find out moment external moment due to eccentricity that also we can find out m will be equal to p into e in next step we can find out the number of bolt per line approximately from this formula this formula is known to you from the earlier uh, class lecture uh, when bolt groups are subjected to uh, uh, load different uh, eccentric load then uh, how to find out the number of bolts uh, when uh, sorry when uh, bolts are subjected to I mean uh, in plane load then how to calculate the number of bolt per line that also we have dis discussed earlier. So, in a similar fashion we can find out here the number of bolt per line from this formula that is n is equal to root over 6 m by n dash into p into v s uh, v s d b sorry v d v d s b design strength right. Then we can find out shear force in the bolt compute shear force that means what is the shear force coming in the bolt v s b that we can find out in bolt that will be how much the assumption is that uh, each bolt are carrying equal amount of load. So, uh, if the total load is p and total number of uh, bolt is n then we can find out uh, what is the force coming on the uh, uh, each bolt that is v s b that will be total number of p by n dash into n where n dash is equal to number of uh, uh, bolt line and n is equal to number of bolts in each line. So, from this we can find out the v s b value. Next in sixth step we can find out the design tensile strength of bolt T d b. T d b is the design tensile strength of bolt. So, design tensile strength of bolt also we can calculate uh, then what we can find out we can calculate what is the tensile force on the extreme critical bolt the T b that means T max basically T b is T max earlier we have calculated the T max that is tensile force calculate T b this is uh, tensile force in extreme critical bolt. Right. So, this we can make uh, next we have to check whether V s b the shear force developed on the bolt individually it should be less than the design shear force on the bolt V d s b and T b the maximum tensile force in the bolt that should be less than T d b this is the design tensile force on bolt and then uh, here what we can see one is shear this is shear and this is tension. So, combinedly also we have to check we have to check against combined shear and tension using the interaction formula that is V s b by V d s b whole square plus T b by T d b whole square that should be less than or equal to 1. So, once this is checked that means, the uh, assumed number of bolts are ok, assumed diameter of bolts are ok. So, this is how we can uh, go for a design steps right. So, to summarize this once again I will uh, go through this um, in the slide that is 
the design steps will be first we will decide the nominal diameter of bolt and then provide first we select the nominal diameter of bolt and provide pitch and edge distance suitably then we will calculate the shear strength vdsb what i have discussed that i am repeating once again uh, to remember the design steps so that uh, we can properly design the bolt group when the load is in out of plane to the bolt group then now select the number of bolt line that is n dash and the external moment we can calculate uh, due to eccentricity of the load then we can find out approximate number of bolts per line from this formula n is equal to square root of 6 m by n dash into p into v s d v. So, we have to remember the design steps one by one so that I can find out suitably then one uh, we can go for calculation of the shear force in the bolt. So, once we calculate the shear force we can go to next step that is uh, calculation of the design tensile strength of the bolt T d b that we can find out and next we can find out also the T b, T b is the uh, tensile force on the extreme bolt that means the topmost bolt which will uh, carry the maximum tensile force. So, T b once we find out then individually we can check that V s b has to be less than V d s b and T b has to be less than T d b and also we have to check the um, combined shear and tension using this interaction formula that is this V s b by V d s b whole square plus T b by T d b whole square is equal, uh, less than or equal to 1. So, if we find that V s b is more than V d s b or T b is more than T d b then we have to uh, go for second round of iteration that means we have to go for uh, uh, we have to increase the number of bolt per bolt line. So, if, if we see that individually uh, the shear force due to the load or tensile force due to the moment is more than the design capacity of the bolt in tension and shear then we have to increase the number of bolts or we have to increase the diameter of bolt whatever uh, feels suitable we can uh, do rightly I means accordingly then we have to ensure that V s b is less than V d s b and T b is less than T d b that means, uh, the shear force coming on the bolt which is P by n should be less than the uh, shear force coming on the means uh, should be less than the design shear force shear strength capacity and similarly the tensile capacity T d b of the bolt uh, should be more than the um, tension force coming onto the extreme bolt that individually we have to check also we have to check the interaction formula that means as the bolts are uh, exerting shear and tension simultaneously means at a time so we have to check for uh, combined shear and tension and if it is not less than 1 then again we have to uh, increase the number of bolts or we have to increase the diameter of bolt and then we have to recheck all the things on second and we have to make sure that it is coming less than 1. So, this is how we can go for design. Design is basically a trial and error method. So, we will start with an approximate number of bolt per bolt line then we will uh, check whether it is ok or not. If it is not ok then uh, we have to again increase the number of bolts. So, it is an iterative process. Thank you.